one that was able to call home to my mum. I remember I, I called and my mum answered and I didn't know at the time but there was over 40 people in my parents' house because they'd been told if you hadn't heard, because you know, this is 36, 48 hours later, if you haven't heard you need to plan the funeral and think about it. So they're all, you know, starting a grieving process. And then I'm on the phone and I, the only thing I said was, have you heard from Troy? Because I just thought that once I called home, he must have been rescued as well. Mm -hmm. And they were like, is he not with you? And I was like, no. And then I just said to my mum, you need to come here. And I only had a minute to talk to her on the phone. And then somehow I got off the phone and she started liaising with a volunteer. My mum had never been overseas before. And Jim... Jim Steins called Steve Brax, who was a Premier of Victoria at the time, and got the passport office opened on the 28th. And my mum was over there within 14 hours of the phone call. Mm. And it was just all those little things that people did to help me was just amazing. And I never knew how to thank anyone. But you never needed to, my yeah. God. I love yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, I was always like, shit, I should write them a card. I really should write them a bunch of flowers. <laughs> Because um, back here, um, we were getting text messages and the media was reporting that Troy had been found. Did that information make it to you? Yeah, so I I had, um, they were afraid that I was going to lose my leg at one point, so it was about day four, and this is where my sister was there, and they had to rush me to Bangkok because they thought I was going to lose my leg, and at that time, my face was quite disfigured and they didn't think, they thought I needed to have an emergency surgery. And while I was on the flight to get into surgery, I got off the plane and my sister had the mobile, she turned it on and there was, like, I can't tell you, there would have been over 100 messages because it had been reported in the media that Troy had been found. And Tracy looked at the messages, she said one of them out loud, she said Troy's been found, and then, then she was like, hold on, hold on, hang on, no, I don't know if he has. So it was this five minutes of just like, I was so relieved and then I was like, then so devastated all over again. Yeah. Um, and look, it was a mix up. There was apparent sightings of him when I was in hospital. I had four major surgeries over the next five days. So I was, you know, under general, which you shouldn't go under that many times. They needed to do it to save my, my leg, really. Um, but... Yeah, I, there was a few sightings and I think there was a bit of a mix up because the media started calling me Trisha Broadbridge and which is T Broadbridge and I'd been um, obviously registered as being found and that I was still alive and I think there was some sort of mix up and you know, I, I don't blame anyone for it but yeah, the net, uh, one of the networks did report on it without knowing whether it was right. It was right. Yeah, yeah. So where were you and when was it? that you had the final... That I knew that, that he was dead. Was yeah. yeah. I was, funnily enough, it was like, by this stage it was the 2nd of January, and I'd sent my sister and Emily home the day before, and I just said, there's no point in being here, because, you know, we they had, because I couldn't physically walk, they'd gone and looked through piles of dead bodies on the streets, They'd gone every day to the consulate, the Australian government were looking, the media were looking, everyone was looking and we couldn't find him. And the doctors said they would release me to an Australian doctor in a few days' time. So I'd sent them home and then I just remember thinking, I just want to be home now. I was ready to, to come home and I was maybe hoping that something was going to be different when I came home, I don't know. Yeah. And then I was in a wheelchair at the Bangkok airport and um, we were just about to get on the flight and my mum got her phone out of her handbag to turn it off and there was all these messages on there and there was missed calls. There was about 30 missed calls from Troy's dad and then, uh, who was also over there looking for Troy's body and then my mum called him back and then I got on the phone and I had to confirm which shoulder Troy had a nail because he had three shoulder reconstructions and during one of them they put a bolt in his shoulder and I had to confirm which side and then about 10 minutes later we got the phone call back saying 
that he had, his body has been found. And I just remember I was sitting, well, sitting in Bangkok Airport and I was just like, all these people were around, no one was speaking English, and I just didn't know what to do. I couldn't even walk anywhere, so I was stuck in this chair. So my mum like sort of pushed, started pushing me in the chair and I actually said, you have to leave me. So I made her leave me alone and I just sat there and I just was like, this cannot be happening. I just could not believe it was happening.